Hey, welcome back, Lakeview to Lakers. And we are here in the Laker art room, and we are going to learn how to draw a nose today. And a nose. Um, we're going to use these pieces of paper as examples. Um, and we are going to use um, a very unique style of learning to draw the nose. So I'm going to show you a couple versions. But first, I'm going to show you a few items that we want to talk about first before we get going. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is proportions of the eye. So if I pick a spot on either side of the eye, like you see in the dots right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down so that you can see it a little closer. Now, this dot right here, this dot right here is equal to this dot and this dot. And if I take my pen and I put my pen so that it touches the tip of the dot and it goes there, that measurement should be close to the same. Also, the measurement between the eyes should almost be the same. So this measurement from here to here, which we'll call A, is equal to this measurement, which we'll call B. So A equals B. So the eyes equal each other. Then the measurement here is C, which equals C. So we have a ratio of one to three or three to one or something of that nature that occurs right here between these eyes. Now, if I draw a line that goes through those points that I drew, which should be roughly right through the iris, I should be able to plot a point from this corner to the bottom of the nose. Just like that and just like that. So I get this uh, triangle that's formed. This triangle is essential to understanding how the nose is designed. Now, something else to think about, this line that comes down from the center, it goes into that nose, end of that nostril and to the end of that one. They also say that the height of the iris from the where the iris goes on the bottom which is right there. So if I measure that height, I go here, one, two, three. So there are three irises in height for the nose. So this shape right here is right there. Now notice you can't see very well the bridge of the nose. You really only see the nostril and the bottom. That's what we're gonna to emphasize today as we're drawing. Now, in caricature art, one of the things that I do is I draw a caricature. I start by just drawing a shape that goes like this, and it goes down, and then depending upon the person's shape of their nose, I can go this way. This gets a little shadow there, a little shadow there. Then I put a letter C right here, and a letter C right here, and then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna add the bottom of the dot or the button. Sometimes they'll draw the button up a little higher and I'll add a line here, maybe a line here. And then if I go, if I imagine that shape and I imagine how big the iris is, it's about that size. There's two, there's three. So right here, I get a transition that goes this way and this way. And my eyeballs are gonna be in here. So I can draw almost any shape uh, I can flatten my nostril, give them really big round ones, copy that shape. And now I have those nostrils. Now, one of the things I can do is I can come back with my pencil and I can shade this portion of the nose. And what we have to think about is that portion of the nose is, if I drew a side view, here's your nose, there's your lips, there's your chin, here's where your eyeball would be. Your nostrils go here. This is your upper lip, the snot splitter. But right here, this section, if the sun was shining, is always in shadow. So it gets shaded. I could take a blending tool like a tortillion and, and blend that in. 
I could do the same over here. It can be lighter depending upon uh, how much shadow is occurring or how much. All right, welcome back. We are going to draw, and I'm going to draw with an HB pencil right here. I also have a 6B that I'm going to use. I have a blending stump, so I'm going to use my blending stump. Um, if you have a regular eraser, that'll work too. Just make sure that uh, most of the lead is cleaned off of it so that it doesn't put any uh, marks on your paper. I also use a brush to get rid of the nurgles. And if you have one, a needable eraser would be awesome on this assignment. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my paper in half. I could fold this and find out where the half really is. And then I could fold it this way and see where the half is. Or you can learn to guesstimate. And when you make a guesstimate, there's nothing wrong with a guesstimate. Now, why I divided this is I'm going to go here and I'm going to put a halfway mark, what I think is halfway. And I'm going to measure. Oh, look at that. Pretty close. Now, when I measure and I get that, now I'm going to draw a circle that's going to go and it's going to go about like that big. So it's going to go there and there. So I'm going to draw my circle, and it's going to be searching line gesture. So I'm going to make a couple lines. All right. Now, from here, I'm going to go to the center, and I'm going to draw a line that breaks this up. Okay? I'm going to go a little bit out on either side from that circle. At that point, I'm going to draw a line that goes up, and it's going to go to halfway. on this half of the circle. Now, I'm gonna draw a line that goes up and a line that goes up. And if you remember the rule, it was roughly three irises. So I'm gonna say this circle is gonna be my three irises. So at this point, my nose is gonna to start to go like this, just at the bridge where our nose bridges. Now I'm going to go here and here, and I'm going to draw a line that's halfway in here. And this is important because this is going to be the crown of our nose. Now, I want you to think of your nose as a bottle. So a bottle is round, and it's a surface that one area will be lit, and the sides will be darker. So that's what we're creating here is this will be the, the closest part of the bottle, the next closest part of the bottle, the sides of the bottle. All right, now, um, there's a lady on the internet and she takes the needable eraser and I learned a new trick today. So I'm gonna take mine, I'm gonna squish it up, get rid of the ink that's on it or the graphite that's on it, excuse me. And then as you see it transitions and it starts to turn color. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna roll it into a ball shape and I'm gonna roll it in my hands into a coil. Then I'm gonna put it on the paper here and I'm gonna roll it into a nice even coil. Once I get that into a coil, I can go over my lines and they will take off the graphite so it's not near as dark. And I could do that sideways. Now, as you can see, this lightened this up dramatically. I could also do that with this eraser, but the hard part is, is this eraser might take too much. But you want this to be lighter because you don't want to see those lines. All right, so now, how do we finish this? I'm gonna draw a line that goes from this corner to this corner, and it's gonna go just like this. Whoops, I was a little off. Then this one's gonna go and do the same thing. Now, I'm gonna go from this corner, and I'm gonna go roughly to this height right here, but I'm gonna connect to there and there. Now, if you've ever watched Phantom Menace or, uh, no, Attack of the Clones, this is, this uh, Revenge of the Jedi, or Revenge of the Sith, excuse me. This looks like one of those uh, TIE fighters that J Anakin and Obi-Wan fly. Now, this is the basis for our nose. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here, and I'm going to draw a line that copies or emulates, and that's the big word of the day, emulate. It emulates this curve, and it comes out, and it goes this way. And before it gets to the edge, I'm going to bring it back with a slight curl. I'm going to copy that and do the same thing. Notice how high that one went. This side's going to go over. It emulates that circle. 
and then it goes over and it curls. Now, that is the bottom part of our nose. We have just created this shape. Now we're gonna create this and this. And those, if you look at this nose, those are the only hard lines. This is all shadow and shadow. There's that, that triangle that's formed up there and that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna make a letter C here. It's gonna start underneath and it's gonna come this way. It's gonna go up to that spot and then it's gonna curl this way. I'm gonna do the same over here. It's gonna go like this, curl this way. It's gonna go up and above and it's gonna come like that. Now that's the only hard lines I'm gonna draw. Now, I'm gonna use my HB pencil and I'm gonna start by holding my pencil in my hand like this and I am going to Stick. Not hatching like we did earlier with our, um, but I'm going to scumble with it and I'm going to make a series of circles that go out from there. And I'm going to shade in and layer that in really nice. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Now, I have to imagine that there's a high point and I'm going to pick that somewhere right here. This part of my nose, if you remember, I shaded in, I shaded that in. So I'm gonna do the same down here. I'm gonna scumble with my, and I'm gonna add another layer and it's gonna follow this shape. And it's okay that I went over that because I want the nostril to be darker. And it's gonna go over and around. Then I'm gonna follow that curve shape up. Now remember I drew these two lines. I'm gonna go up this line. This is gonna be an area that's gonna get shadow and I'm still scumbling with my pencil. I'm gonna be working what we call transitions. Transitions are the area between, so like right now, everywhere I go over my pencil, I'm making that darker. Everywhere I go onto the white paper, that is getting a layer of value. So I can create multiple layers and they will be like going down a hill. So they will get darker in one spot and lighter in another or steeper in one part of the hill and less steep in another. Now, I'm really going over and making sure that I get a lot of pencil lead in that area that I think is gonna be the darkest. I'm gonna bring that down and around. And I'm gonna go over that again. Now, usually there's a little bit of a shadow that comes in right where this part of the, so right where this part of the nose comes in, there's a little bit of a shadow that goes in. So I'm gonna bring just a little bit in and I'm gonna bring some of this pencil right into the middle, but not all the way. Now, if my sun was over here shining, then I would need to do a little bit of that over here. So I'm gonna bring this. And then I'm gonna go up this line, but I'm not gonna go as heavy as I did on this side because this side gets the light. So notice what I did. I didn't go directly over it again like I did over there. And I'm gonna go this way. Now I'm gonna go up this side. And I'm gonna come back down this way. And I'm gonna start going over my nose down here again. Now, I am gonna move my highlight over here more. So I'm gonna put a little more shadow on this side. You can see where my paper has some, well, I mixed some flour clay and there's little chunks of salt and flour underneath there and I thought I brushed them off. Okay, so I've got that pretty good and dark right now. Now before I do some blending, I'm gonna come back with my 6B and I'm gonna show you something first. I'm gonna take this kneadable eraser and just watch this. I can go like this and wiggle a little bit and it will pull off a layer of graphite. And you can see the graphite's now on here. So then I can clean it now, I could really lightly go over this again and get it back to the same level as what was there. 
Now, I'm going to take my 6B and I'm going to go over where it was really dark. And you can see I'm not pressing harder. 6B is a softer graphite. What it means is, is it's actually more graphite and less clay binder. I'm going to do the same over here. And because there's more graphite, it has a tendency to appear darker. Now I'm going to go over. I'm going to put a layer over that dark part of my nose. Notice I go right over my nostril again. So that gets dark. I'm going to go over here on this side with this. Now, this is a hard edge. There's no transition between the smooth. If you look here, there's a dark, then it gets middle gray, then it gets light gray. There's almost a transition where it's a smooth transition. That's what we're looking for when we start to bring in our um, tortillion. So notice I'm just going with a really small area in there and I'm coming up and I'm going here. Now I'm going to start going and I'm going to bring that dark layer and I've got really tight circles that I've been doing. And I'm going to go up here and now I'm mixing this in really well. And this is becoming really, really good and firm. Now, this is starting to look like a nose. It's nice and shadowed. I'm going to bring just a little bit of this over. And I'm going to come just up a little bit right along that outside edge and go there. Now, yeah, I'm liking that. Now, I'm going to take my tortillion. And I'm going to start on the light edge, and I'm going to start rubbing here. And I want to eliminate my lines as much as possible. I don't want that center line in there, so I could erase that out with my hard eraser. If I don't have a hard uh, uh, needable, I can pull off light bits of by just lightly erasing, and you can see that it picked up a lot. So you can do the same thing with your... Uh, rubber eraser or your plastic eraser, but you just want to be careful. Now I'm going to start blending into my darker area and I'm going to pull it back. See how I come back and I pull it in and that makes a transition and it's a smooth transition. So it's like running down a nice even hill. Uh, whereas if I have a harsh edge like this, that's like jumping off a cliff. So we don't want to jump off the cliff. We want we want our transitions to be nice and smooth. I'm going to come in here. Now, that dark is going to go all over. So I got to switch my side now. And I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to smooth in my transition. And because this is mostly in shadow, there's not going to be much highlight there. I'm going to go to do the dark. Okay, now that's all. If you have a piece of sandpaper, like I do, you can um, you can clean your tortillion or your blending stump by rubbing it. And that will help so that you don't have that dark going into some of these areas where you don't want dark. Oh, now watch what I do. I'm going to blend and I keep circling. I keep refining, keep adding graphite. And I pull, and that transition should start to get smoother, and I'm not jumping off a cliff there. I'm, it's a nice transition to the lighter edge of my paper. I'm going to bring that up. And I'm going to keep pulling that out, putting some graphite out there so that I get a nice, it's almost like uh, smoke from your campfire. As it just billows out from the fire, it's really nice and dark. And then as it gets further away, it wispy, becomes wispy. And that's what we're looking for, that our transition gets a little wispy. Now I could keep reworking this. I could add a little more graphite. And notice I didn't go to my 6B right away because this is transitional stuff. I'm using my HB, which isn't as dark. And I'm going to, that is going to help me. Now, I keep just doing this. I can work this a lot. And when you're in senior high, you'll probably do a lot of where I have you go over it a few times and just work it. All right, so there we go. We got one side shaded. We're doing pretty good so far. Now we're gonna come over and we're gonna start shading this side, doing that same kind of thing. 
scumbling, bringing it in, scumbling, 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 making that transition. Now this side's going to get, I'm going to work that a little more. I'm going to come in here. I want to work that highlight. Make sure that I get some in there. Now, if I go over and I put a layer in like that, I can do the same here. I get a nice even transition. I'm going to show you how we're going to rectify that so we can come back and use our white. Now, stumbling into the little bit of 6B that I put there so it's a little darker. And then I'm transitioning this way so that I get a nice, nice even tone. And I'm going to probably have to add a little bit of HB. I'm going to go under my nose. Now, because there's the lights coming this way, I might get a little round shape that goes like this and goes underneath. So I'm going to put a little bit here that represents that shadow from the nose. And there's always a cast shadow from the nose. We just don't think of it that way. It, it's what helps define the nose shape. And that's that because the nose is underneath. There we go. Look at that. Now I'm going to start working that in dark. Now, I might not like the... So I could come in and scumble in some more dark. Scumble in some more dark. I might add a little bit here and bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to come and... Transition this so that it's a smoother transition. I even showed on the uh, demo today during class, I showed how to make the snot splitter. But I'm going to stop right here for this video just so that you um, have enough of it. Um, there it is, how to draw a human nose. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps.